the joys of technology. So I actually recorded an entire tutorial today on this digital backdrop and how I painted it and how you can paint it. And I had done this one earlier and then it occurred to me that I've never actually done a tutorial on this so it might be useful for you guys. And this is, you know, an example of two images where I used portraits and the digital backdrops. It's, it's a pretty effect. But I did the whole tutorial and for some odd reason it didn't save. So I'm back and I'm going to do it again. So now I will have three new digital backdrops. Um, anyways, let's get this started. Okay, I'm going to start with, let's do this one. I'll start with this one. Um, I'm just going to use the bucket tool and fill it with black and I'm going to flatten it and really quickly I'm going to save it as a new file so that I don't save it over top of my old one. So we're going to call this one three. And yes, these will be available in my store later on. Okay, new layer. And I use most of my foliage brushes out of my set, which you can see here. This is a newer one. I don't think I have this one up for sale at all. Um, doesn't have a lot of stuff that I use terribly much. But anyway, I'm going to use the Ivy brush to start and I'm going to come in here and grab a darker sage color and um, yeah it needs to be darker so I usually just come in and build the base of of this like this. Now I know it's probably not making a whole heck of a lot of sense to you right now but just bear with me because this is actually really super easy to do. You can see I'm at 100 and 100 but I do use a Wacom tablet so it's pressure sensitive. So for instance if I press hard then you can see that we get a nice more pronounced Ivy. Okay, so this is just, like I said, it's just a base and I typically work in a bunch of layers. So now I'm just going to come up and use a bit of a lighter version of the same color range. Okay, now I'm going to switch brushes and this time I think I will use, I'm going to use this Leaf 3. This is one of my favorite ones. Um, I'm going to do try and do different color tones this time instead of the same ones. Um, let's maybe come into our golds. So I'm going to use a gold. And I do want this one to be pretty small. And if you're familiar with it, it's, it's random. So it changes every time you put your brush down. And I'm just going to apply little kind of blobs, which really can be flowers, right? But I'm trying to do it in a way that looks like it would be legit. I'm just going to come down here and change the color a little bit because flowers and mother nature in nature Things are not never, you know, just one consistent color. She usually likes to paint with many different shades and many different colors. So I'm going to kind of mimic that. And now I'm coming in a little darker. Actually, I want it to be darker still. It's the equivalent of just adding shadows, right? Okay. Don't be afraid of this technique. Don't be afraid to play and add your own spin because it's actually kind of fun to do this. You don't 
really have to know too much about digital painting. I guess you have to have a general understanding of tones and shadows and highlights. But this is so abstract that it really, it really doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to come in now and choose a different color. Maybe something around this one. You can even look at actual plants and flowers and stuff like that to get inspiration. But I'm just doing this out of my head like I usually do. The lovely thing about painting digitally like this is that you can always undo any little mistakes or errors that you've made. Now I'm going to come in with a redder, more red, and just kind of add a little bit of accent color. Now I know you're probably going, well, how did you do this? Because it doesn't look anything like the other ones. Well, that's very true. It's so true. I'm going to come back to my very first flower one and just reduce that a little bit. And now I'm coming back up here. I might try a different brush. Let's see what I got. Um, I have so many, but they're all so, so different. I do like this tree crowns one. Let's try this one because what I can do is I can kind of come in here to the greens and I'm going to come in at the base layer. So I'm actually applying this a lot underneath. So this one is kind of like treetops. I'm not loving the color. I think you need to love love the colors that you're working with and I'm not feeling it I do lean towards more of a sagey green than that bluey green yeah this is way better Alrighty, so I'm coming in because I'm working at the base layer. I can come in and kind of fill in some of these darker spots because it's behind. But it makes me not like a lot of the other stuff. So actually, I think what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll just paint over top of this a little bit with a darker because I'm not really loving those blobs they look like blobs to me but it looks great this way all right I'm gonna reduce the overall opacity to about here and now I need to add some um, complementary colors Okay, now blue flowers, not really that prevalent in nature, but let's see if we can just add some interest. gonna go a little bluer make it smaller and just kind of paint around like so and even bluer I think this color here is more available in nature than the original, but that's okay. It is, after all, 
not supposed to look completely legitimately real. So it's kind of like using the different tones and colors to create the shadows. Which is fine. Um, there's no rhyme or reason or rules. Remember that, okay, guys? Like, it's whatever your heart desires. It is important, though, to use good color selections because I've done a few where the colors just look like yucky kooky paka, which is not fun. Okay, let's come up here, a little bit of lavender. And um, <clears throat> also just remember that like, let's say you did a bunch of colors like the yellow that I did and then afterwards you go, you know, I actually really hate that. If you're, when you're working in layers like this, you can just come in afterwards and you can just delete them and start over, so. Nothing that you do is really ever final until you flatten, right? Um, I am going to come back down to this yellow and reduce it a bit more. And new layer. Um, I'm going to change my brush again. I do like my watercolor. This one here, it's a little textured. Um, but I would like to probably come up and do a brighter kind of color. Now this um, watercolor brush, I do tend to, you know how I don't usually work in with opacity with, because it's very strong, I like to come in and just lower that opacity so it looks a little more legit. and play with different tones and different colors because that's what's going to make it look better ultimately. So when I go really light like this, what this allows you to do is kind of create some highlights on the would-be flower petals so don't be afraid to add little tweaks of light because that's ultimately what this is right Don't worry if it's not perfect because it's not supposed to be. It's very abstract. I'm just going to add more color to this one because it looks a little off. And then you can reduce to suit. Um, yeah, let's reduce this one. Something like that. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to merge all of these layers. Boom. Okay. And Command or Control T to transform. And let's just pull that up a little bit and out a little bit. Okay. So this is our base, right? 
There's a couple of things you can do. You can come in and use liquify and mush it around a bit if you want to. I typically will come in and duplicate the layer and then I'll go to image adjustments, hue saturation, and then I will choose like let's say the blues, let's say I'd, I want to change the tone of the blues. Then you can come in here and affect it individually like so. because it's possible that you might not actually care for it. Okay, and now my grab tool, and now I have this version of this exact same. So the key here is to switch it up. So you can do that, you can drag it over. If you want to, duplicate that one, come over, Command T, and I like to make sure that it ends up behind the other one so that it looks a bit better. And then what you can do is you can come and you can individually affect the color and tones of each one. So if I just work with the master file here, so if I pull it to the left, it looks a little bit more unique. And then if I duplicate that one and pull it down here, I want it on top this time. We're just going to twist it around like that. So do you get the idea? So this is pretty much how, how I do it all the time. Duplicate that one again. We're going to rotate it all the way this way, like so. And I want this one at the bottom so that it goes behind those other ones. And now I can duplicate this one and I can drag it, rotate it like so, duplicate, drag it, rotate it, like so. And don't be afraid to go in and adjust the hue saturation individually. So let's say I wanted that one to be a little bit more like that. I could go a little bit more vibrant or really tone it down like so and even reduce the opacity so it doesn't look so defined. Um, let's do the same thing with this one. We're just gonna reduce it down. I like it to look almost like a vignette around it. This is the upper left, so we're reducing that down. Um, this one could be reduced as well. And this one, let's reduce this one. And definitely this one, nope. Yeah, that one can go a bit, but this one here, is it this one? Yes. This one I'm reducing, and I'm also going to come in and do a bit of a hue change. I want it to be, well, let's see what I want. That's good. It just gives it a different feel. So we don't want it to all look exactly the same. I like those colors now, so I'm going to duplicate it and put it over here. I want it a little bit bigger, right about there. Yes, I like that one. So I'm going to do that again. This one's coming up about here, but I want to rotate it to about there. And let's do one more. And this one's going to come over here. Um, this middle one here, I feel like it needs to be rotated. Yeah, I'm not feeling it terribly much, am I? Yeah, I just, you guys, it's all about feel, so do not be afraid. Okay, so that's that one. I actually think I want that one beneath and this one beneath that middle one still not my fave hmm let's reduce yeah that's better so yeah just find your layers that are kind of driving you a little crazy and come in and you can play with the different opacities and all that fun stuff until it's exactly where you want it to be this one I think is needing a little more reduction 
and then so is this one. Okay, all right, doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna merge all these layers like so. Now we're gonna duplicate that and you can add a screen blend mode and then reduce it down, but also don't forget you can flip it horizontally, play with your opacity, Okay, now new blank layer over top. Choose a color. Doesn't doesn't really matter what color. I'm just gonna use this pink pinky one. I'm just gonna use a soft white brush and lower my flow down to about 16 or so. And I like a little bit of almost like a light on the top. And then I'll choose one of these colors. So let's say this one and then you can come in and just add another little touch and a little bit to the middle so that it looks like you have a bit of a vignette. You can reduce this about there. I really like this purple here. It's more like a blue, I guess. But let's just add a little bit of that to the edges. I think that makes it look pretty sweet too. Just a bit, not too terribly much. Reduce. Okay, not too bad. We're going to flatten this now, and I am saving it. And you know what guys, I'm working in JPEG, 8-bit, this is nothing fancy. The size of this is an 8 by 10. We, we're gonna come into our selective color and do a little bit of color toning. So now in we have a lot of reds and purples and blues. There's really almost anything in here. But just come in and start playing. Like if you want a little bit of red in your darks, you could add some magenta, but if you do red and magenta, then it kind of takes over. So I'm probably just gonna leave it like that. Um, I am gonna deepen it down just a smidge. Come into my neutrals, I'm gonna throw in some yellow and a little bit of green and pull up minus two. Now whites, I don't think we have any whites in here. Um, I will add some but this is probably not going to see that doesn't do anything. Okay, so I think that looks good. That's before and that's after. It's just kind of warmed it up. You can also reduce that way and then flatten. Okay, um, next step, I'm just going to do a wee bit of dodging and burning. And the reason for this is because I just want to add a little tiny bit more depth and detail. The middle here did end up looking a little too flat. But I'm also very picky. And then with your dodge tool, you probably want to pop out some of those highlights. So just very subtly, you don't want it to be too annoying to the eye. Before and after, 
adds a little bit of dimension like so. Okay, now comes the fun part. So duplicate your layer. And yes, we're going to come into Topaz. We're going to start with Glow. Okay. All right, so now, see, within the Glow work, workflow of Topaz, like it adds a lot of texture, which for a texture is really, really perfect, right? And I do like how it now really looks more like a texture. So I'm going to go ahead and just click OK on this. However, um, if you look at the before and the after, see how now it really looks like a texture? I really, really like that. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer and I'm going to come back in and this time I'm going to go to impression. And I'm going to open up the workflow and just make the brush size larger so that I can get rid of all those white spots. I do like to reduce my width, but that'll usually bring back some white spots. But in all honesty, at this point, do I really care? Mm, not really. The white spots might actually add to it. Um, I'm going to scroll down and go to my lighting tab down here and just increase the highlights, which will actually accentuate those white spots and brighten it up just a bit as well as the contrast. Okay, click OK. And then this time, I'm going to really reduce that because remember all that lovely texture that we had before I really do want to keep it so now even with those little white splotches it looks good right and what you can do is you can just do a blank layer on top and sample the colors if you want to get rid of some of those little splotchy white things it'll just kind of you know help it out a little bit Don't be afraid. The whole key point with doing this is don't be afraid. Trust the process and play around with different colors and lighting and all that fun stuff. Because you can create, you know, the illusion of light. You can always go back in and add another layer. I love doing this. I find it actually to be really relaxing. Put on your favorite podcast. I don't know about you guys, but I'm slightly addicted to true crime these days. There's so much crap out in the world. I listen to so much true crime now, and it just makes me terrified for my kids to go out in public. <laughs> so I don't know if that's the smartest thing in the world to do. So yeah, just play around. You know, when I start out with these, I don't usually have oh, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that in mind, I typically come in really not knowing and I just trust the process. Yeah, no. Okay. All right. So that's before, that's after. You can reduce it a little bit. And I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten it, duplicate it. And I actually do want to come in and do that glow again because I don't want to remove all that texture that I just worked so hard to get. But if you look, if you look now, you can really see that it's pretty severe. So let's open it up. See what we can do. I do want some more contrast and more saturation. And I'm just going to go ahead and click OK and go back. And this time I'm going to reduce this one because I know it's a little bit too much. Actually, let's try this. 
Command T to transform and flip it horizontally, it might add a little bit of interest. It kind of makes it look messy. But I do like it. That's before and that's after. I'm going to reduce it a little bit. I'm just going to experiment here, go into levels. Now you can see we have absolutely no highlights, right? So I'm going to pull that up. Something like that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, flatten, duplicate. Now back into glow, but this time I'm going to actually use the contrast glow instead of the sharpening because look at that oh it's terrible okay come down to the contrast and color which is this one and I'm going to brighten it up just a smidge like about that click OK and reduce Now back into selective color to our blacks. Play with what tones you want in your shadows. Go into neutrals, I'm going to add in some yellow. The yellow is really looking green, isn't it? And now let's reduce. Before and after, that looks better. Flatten and let's add a blank layer and for this one I think I'm going to use another foliage brush let's use my leaf one and I'm going to make sure my flow is about 16 and I'm just going to come in around the perimeter like so I do think I want some more gold about this like I said this brush really sprays so you might want to <clears throat> you might want to just be careful with that and then reduce Now, for me, that icky greeny color, I'm not really feeling it. So I'm going to try to come into my hue saturation and let's just see if it's green. It's not really green. I think it's yellow. Yeah, it's yellow. So not feeling that greenish color in here. I do think that the blues and the cooler tones actually make it look better. This is kind of red. Let's see. Oh, the pink might be nice. Before and after. So it's kind of replaced that, right? Uh, let's just reduce it a bit. I don't really like that color, but without the greens, it doesn't look very good. Yeah, so it's just all a big experiment. Curves, I'm going to try to add some contrast back to the center. Something like this. Invert it. Um, back to a soft brush. And I'm just going to paint a little more contrast because I think we lost some of it in there. New layer, multiply 
blend mode and I'm just going to come back into our vignette. Another, this one's absolutely normal blend mode and let's just add a little bit of light back to the top. Like so. You know what? I think what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and flatten this, but what I think I want to do is I really like this. So I'm going to copy this and just create a new layer and add this kind of back up in here. And then add a mask and just kind of paint it away from the edges. Make sure you get all those hard edges off. You can see them if you're diligent. Flip it. Every time I say flip it, I can't help but think of that song back, back in the day. <laughs> okay. It's a bit better. I'm not loving it still. Not terribly. Always play with your blend modes to see if you can find an answer to your troubles. actually do like that better now. But don't forget, if you're feeling kind of meh about it, you can come in, grab a brush again. I'm going to use that tree crowns. And I feel like the reds would really benefit from this. So if I come in now, with this new layer because the middle seems less flower like and then you can just add more so don't be afraid to just come in and say mm, not super feeling that so let's add a little bit more of one or two colors like this If you look at some of the old paintings from the old masters back in the 16, 1700s, you know, a lot of them were never super defined and perfect. They were very abstract, but you knew, like your eye knows looking, oh, that's a bouquet of flowers. And so there's, you know, you just have to kind of do what you feel looks good. I wouldn't overthink it. I just know what appeals to my eye and that's why I go, okay, no, that's not working for me. Or, you know, come in and change a little something here or there. Right? I lost my tree crowns. So yeah, just come in, maybe add a little bit more around like that.
and then you can do whatever. You can come back, you can do more topaz, you can do less topaz, you can run um, exposure. So that's before, that's after, and then reduce just for a little bit of effect. This one's way longer than the last one I did, but that's okay. I do want just a little bit of light in there, and I do think that it needs to be more in the lavender purple. And blue. I'm gonna pull this up a bit. See, if we use lighter colors in the center, then it'll actually help. Reduce. Let's flatten. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Exposure 4. Okay, now it just defaulted on the last one that I used. If I hit my space bar, you can see what it actually looks like. I'm gonna reset my whole layer because I want to start from the basic. Now these are the recently used ones that I've modified, so if I start clicking on them, um, you can see what other ones look like that I've, I've done. I do like adding in a border. Um, I do typically go with the damaged ones and I try to find more of a black one um, and then reduce the opacity right, right, right down like so. I'm gonna come in and increase my oranges, my reds, my blues, my cyans. I don't want any sharpening like at all because there's already a ton from that glow 
uh, plugin. Don't want any sharpening, so we're turning it off. Make sure the sharpening is turned off down here. Probably not any grain. All right, so that's mm, starting to look a bit better. Let's come up to our curves and maybe add in a little bit of matte. Like so. So that's before and that's after. I do want to pull up my highlights, but it's really focusing on these whitey things, right? So I don't actually like that. Let's just go ahead and pull it back into Photoshop and reduce to about here. Okay, you can actually put a actual texture over top as well if you want to. Um, there's quite a bit of texture in this already. Delete or duplicate. I'm going to come into Adobe Camera Raw and try and soften some of those harsher things there because it's just a little too much. So I'm going to reduce the clarity. Make sure there's no sharpening on, no texture. I just want to reduce that texture a bit because it's a little strong. Click OK, and then I can selectively paint off a bit, just a bit. I don't want too much texture. And if you feel like it's still too much, you can always do another impression because with impression, it'll actually get rid of some of that texture. So duplicate, come into impression, and it usually will soften it. Okay, and now I can just reduce that. I'm going to take this little wee texture and I'm going to drag it over. It's bigger. It's bigger. So we're going to fit it. And I'm going to choose a soft light. And this is a way to really help if you feel like you've got too much texture. Just throw another one over top. And it can help. And you can use your patch tool, like for this line, you can just get rid of, you know, if you don't want these lines showing, looking too obvious, then you can do that. I think that actually looks better. And another layer, and we're just going to come back to our gold color. And again, we're just going to I'm going to choose a purpley color down here, and then reduce. Okay, flatten, and that's pretty much it, guys. Um, you could keep going, like for instance, I'm still kind of bothered by that center because it's not contrasty enough. So I'm just going to create a contrast curve and invert it and then paint it back on because I want that center portion to be a little more poppy, like so. I think that 
looks better. And that, my friends, is how you can make your own digital backdrops. I'm just going to brighten up a bit. Invert. Selectively add that exposure a little bit, like so. Anyways, I should stop because you could literally keep going forever, right? Okay. So if you like this or if you try it, please share what you do in our Facebook group. I would love to see what you come up with. And until the next video, see you then, guys.